Hey folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to our crazy farming simulator series. I've painted over the shrubs as well, just on these corners, so we should be able to get between these three fields here on this corner now. At least that's what I'm hoping. And I am keeping it as minimal as possible, because I think that's a better way of doing this. But we don't need to worry too much now about um, like going out uh, against the edges because we've already done the other edges and we cleared up all of the other bits we just bring the header out near the edge of the field like that and whiz on round I like the width that we've got for this header on this field I think that this kind of this, this does seem to fit quite nicely I'm wondering if we will try to make it a little bit bigger it honestly I think it's going to be difficult to use it if it gets too much bigger than this but at the same time we've got to take into account the fact that we will want bigger areas but then um, if we're getting bigger fields so we need a bigger header and we're sort of starting to combine these fields together uh, we will change the way that we're doing things now right now I'm on 10,000 liters right if I put everything into the front trailer up there, the back trailer would have been big enough to take all of the barley from the field right here. Right? I've now just finished that bit, so I've got one tank full. The rest, it, that would have been absolutely fine. We could have done that. We can't now because I went and did use both trailers. Well, live and learn. Next time, we will do it the other way around. Not that it will really matter. Uh, that was not... I'm wondering if I haven't updated the mass of the trailer on the front. I may not have done. I definitely have with the 2 million litre one. The other one. But I don't remember if I did it with this one. We'll, we'll soon find... Like, Well, I'm not going to say soon. Um, we will find out eventually. Now... This right here, we've got this wheat here. I'm not... I've thought about this for a bit, and I don't think that we will save any. I, I don't think saving it is the right option right now. Um, we've got so much stuff that we actually need to use the wheat for. It would be better, I feel, to just go and dump it into uh, the mill. There's nothing else that we actually want to put it into. It's not going to benefit us putting it anywhere else. But if we go and drop this into the mill, we've then got... So we can drop it in there. We can put 100,000 litres in that one. And then we can start that one grinding away. And then that will provide flour for here, for pancakes. We See, we do need eggs. All of these things need eggs, except for the pizzas. The egg pizza needs, pe needs eggs. The others don't. We need tomatoes for that one. Eggs are needed in there for some of those recipes, but, uh, well, flour isn't. What else do we need flour for? The pancakes, but we need eggs for pancakes. And then... Uh, donuts, yeah, but I need eggs for those. Cereal doesn't need flour. Bread. Huh. Eggs might be... <laughs> it might be a good idea to actually get the eggs. Um... So it might be a good idea to get the chickens because of the sheer quantity of stuff that we've got that seems to need eggs rather than just flour. We're going to have to do something about that. So let me bring you in here. I'll put all of the... We'll, we'll put the wheat in and we'll turn this into flour and then we will... So tip all of that out. And I think we might save a little bit of barley and we'll get just a few chickens at least. How's that? If we just have a few chickens that could be a good start. Let's put all of that in. See, I don't know why. The, the back one looks better than the front one. It might just be the class colours. Like, the uh, class colours are, are generally very, very pleasing to the eye. And maybe it's that. But that still looks more like a trailer than the back one. I, I'm not going to worry about the trailer for the minute though because we've got two options. And we've, we do have some colour options on them. It's just that they're not quite what I was originally thinking. They're slightly different looking. 
Well, that, 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 that's fine. Let's leave you there, and then we'll take this single trailer here, and we'll go back over to the grain field. And I think I can go across this field here, and out that gate there. Okay, I've closed the field gates, though, so that means I'm going to need to go back through here anyway. Go up there. And what's going to be the quickest and easiest way to get through? Through this one. We just drive through this one like this. Now, yes, in theory, you wouldn't do this. In theory, you would go round, but... I am a lazy, lazy man, and I have absolutely no intention of doing anything like that. I'm just going to bring this one down to here, like this, and then I can switch over, and we can finish doing this month's combining. We've then got a little bit of baling that we need to do. Well, that's easy enough. We go and get our baler, and we will whiz through that in no time at all. I love how fast this combine empties out. That was definitely a good move on my part. Making sure that it could do that. And we're away again. I'm really, really liking this combine. I, I'm quite surprised. I I was um and an iron about this one. This is why I chose this one as kind of like a starter combine for this series. Because I was sort of looking at it and I was like, well, I guess if I really don't actually like the combine, it's not going to matter. I can easily have another one and we can do some upgrades. But now I've got this one. It's small, it's manoeuvrable, and I like the changes that I've made to it. I like the fact that it can spin round so easily. Like it, it's, it's a very cool combo. I, I like this one. I'm thinking that this is going to be a permanent addition to the farm. So I'm going to bring this one now. So we've got... Let's shut that one off a second. There, and if we have a look in here, so we've got a uh, canola there, which we will need the combine for. It's four separate fields of canola there. Uh, we've got beans over here, which we need the combine for, and then we've got sunflowers over there, which we will need to combine, but we'll need a different header. So we've got two more crops here. That crop there is going to be well. I think this one is going to be the next one to harvest. So we want to be ready to be able to cut the canola. In which case, I'm going to bring this combine over. And I'm going to park it up in the field ready. And this is actually a, a real life thing. It, it is done in real life. You do park the combine on the side of the field sometimes. It, it sort of depends on the area that you live in. And... Clearly, that's not going to work very well. So I will just go and remove this section right here. Okay, that's going to work a lot better. I can go back up and... Right, so that would be ready. And we're going to park the combine right here on the side, which is actually going to be right in the way of our baler when we want to bring that one up. So let's not park the combine there. And instead... We will put the combine over here in the grass. And we're not putting it right close to the road. We're putting it a bit away from the road. It can still be seen from the road, which is not ideal. But sometimes you, you, you've got to sort of do what you've got to do. Um, and we'll just kind of leave it like that. We won't worry about it too much. I need to get this back. Now, I've got 18,000 litres of grain. Do I or do I not start getting chickens with 18,000 litres of grain. Now, that's all we've got. That means that our chickens would get... A, I suppose at least the chickens can't starve to death in this game. Um, I was going to say that means that we will have to buy grain in, but I said very specifically, no, we will not buy in any grain. I'm even thinking that we should have a seed maker and so that we can make our own seed in the game because... You know, that way we're not buying anything in at all. But I'm not going to go quite to that just yet. I, but I just, I really love the idea of, like, everything has to be completely self-sufficient. Let me find the chickens. The chicken coop is 1 million euros. I forgot that I did actually properly price that one. 
Uh, which means that we can't buy the chicken coop anyway. All right, this this one is is not an option now. Where is? I don't know if I can even see the back of the chicken coop. Oh, there it is. You can just there, right by where the donuts are. You can see it going out into the grass right now. Way back. Over here, look there where it is right now and look carefully and you can just see the little yellow dots for the back of where the, the thing would go. So what we will do with this one is we probably like would have to put it here somewhere, I think. So then the eggs can be gathered from the back, but we'd also have to be a little bit careful. So, right, I can't do that because I don't have that money. I don't have that kind of money right now. I could take out a loan and I could do it so that we could get the eggs and start up some of these other ones. But I think instead we will this year just dump the barley as well as the wheat and we will instead fire up some of these other productions and i know that we make a lot of money from eggs but um egg selling directly is not something that i want to do anymore we have to process everything at least once and i'm gonna try and do that as much as i possibly can so activate that one and activate that one that means we've got both of those now producing flour which will auto distribute out to wherever they gotta go I'm going to keep this trailer, and this one we will put back in the yard. So this one we'll be using for the other crops as well as we harvest them. And we've got several more crops that we're going to have to worry about. Let's put this one away in a shed. We need more sheds. Shed space is limited at the moment, and I said that we must have sheds. Although I said for buying. Um, yes, technically I know. I'm... I'm cheating on that a bit but well it's fine right let's grab you i can now get a bit more straw and we've got two choices we can either just take all the straw that we get this time and dump it straight into the cows i think i can put bales straight into these cows i'm not actually sure i think i did make it so that that would be a possibility but there's no guarantee we have 100,000 liters of grass in this baler which is going to all turn into straw. So I will bring you back over there like that. We've got that one hooked on. And then we can go whizzing out along here. And we've got that wheat and barley field to go and bale up. I'm, I won't actually try and put it in for the cows. I will just put it into our storage spot because... Uh, we might be a... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, no. What do I need to make the mineral feed? I just got a... Uh, uh, do I need wheat or barley? If I do, we ain't doing it this year. No, I don't. Right, okay. Uh, i got to remember that we actually need these crops here to go into this one to make the mineral feed. Because once the mineral feed has been made, then we can put it in here... And we can have the total mixed ration. So the total mixed ration... Uh, 15... Right, that does make a total mixed ration recipe right there. The other building has a similar total mixed ration recipe. But I think you actually have the same quantities of uh, grass... Of uh, hay, silage and straw. And then you have the mineral feed put in as well. This one has got a little less straw going into it. So I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. I can't actually remember right now whether I've said that this is something that we're going to do. So I will have a think about that. So whether or not I definitely do want to do it like that. At the moment, I'm genuinely kind of of two minds on that one. So we want to start our trailer up with the auto load. And then we'll go to the baler and... We will rip the trailer apart like that with the hitch. <laughs> really doesn't like it, does it? Once it moves it, it's it, it's sort of done, isn't it? Um. Well, that that that's fine. And now we can go and start doing our baling. Now, to start with, it's going to stick as a grass bale. I'm curious how much straw we're going to need to pick up. How much? 
I'm, I'm guessing it's a percentage of bail that you've got to pick up. Maybe it's like 5%. It might not even be that. It might just stay as... I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I think we've had this before and it changed. I just don't remember how much we had to pick up in order for it to change. Because right now we're picking up straw. But it doesn't seem to recognize that I'm picking... It might need to complete the bale even. Why aren't you changing to straw? Well, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to complain if it just flat out refuses to do that because we could do with the extra grass more than we could do with the straw. I mean, both of them are good, but... Oh, it's now changed to straw. All right, I don't know what the trigger was for that, why it changed over, but it now has changed over and we've now got straw coming through. 250,000 litres. So, just carry on. I'll, I'll carry on through and do this a minute. And then once we've finished this uh, field here. Oop, we've missed a whole load of one there. And there's that bale gone onto the trailer. We'll get this finished up. And then... Well, there isn't a lot else that we need to do this month. Like we, we've, well, I suppose there is a bit of milk that we need to move, but I, I kind of want to do something with that. Like we're going, there's a lot of going backwards and forwards now with the milk because it takes two loads with our milk lorry. So we're gonna want something different, which means that I'm probably gonna need to make that one a bit bigger, or we're gonna need to seriously look at trying to get the TX uh, truck instead problem with that one is that it's prohibitively expensive right now and I don't have the money for it. So I'm yeah. Um, hmm. And I want to get away from this leasing everything. That's the other thing. is I, I need to get away from leasing everything. I, I, I haven't really got a lot of choice at the moment. We are having to do a lot of leasing but we definitely want to start trying to move away from this. And that's one of my aims in this series is to just find out how possible that's going to be. Just building up like we are. I mean, eventually we can, but it's the the volume of stuff that we're going to need to do in order to make the money to afford the giant machinery. So we're still having to build up, but I want to be able to do crazy stuff. So we need to, yeah, we, we've got to strike this balance. How soon are we going to be able to get away from leasing? Probably not very. One tiny little bit left over there. And I have a bale that is 247,000 litres. That's not fair. It's not supposed to be like that. Oh, well. There is not a lot that we can do about that. We will close this off. I'll fold that one back over there. And then I'll go to the trailer. And I will strap that one down. It doesn't actually matter too much that it's 247,000 litres. Because the next bit of bailing that we're going to do is also a straw. It will be straw over here. So what I'm going to do with this one is this baler and trailer is going to be left here because it's going to be the canola straw that we're going to get. So that's actually going to be the very next thing that we do. So if I drop that one off there, that one can stay in the field ready and waiting. And I think what I should do is go through and just alter a couple of the gateways so we've got the gateway that we had up the top up there so we've sort of done that the we can get down through that one um i think we should have one that goes i don't know if we want one that goes between that field and that field that one down there we don't need one that goes between that one and the one over that end we've got a, a piece up there here is where we're going to want something. We want this gateway to be removed. And then we want to be able to get between these here. So I want that piece there to be removed. There, like that. That bit's out so that we can easily go between those. We could already go round, but I kind of wanted just an extra bit 
on this end, it's going to make it a lot simpler. And uh, we could also, like, there's already a little bit of a gap there from removing the some of the hedgerow. So if I also take that bit out and this bit out. Now, this is the arable side. And previously in my experience, arable stuff, they tend not to worry too much about internal gateways. Like some places I've been, you, you, you've got little bits of hedgerow and entire chunks of field. Like you, you'll have a 200-meter stretch of hedgerow somewhere and then uh, 400 meters either side that is nothing at all and I mean yes that that's kind of an extreme value but you get the idea now somewhere in here there is a gate there yeah, open objects metal gate sell yes and then I can go to here and I can remove that piece of hedgerow right there I don't think I need to remove anything else and then there's also this end here now I've already removed the gate so we should in theory be able to come along here and somewhere there will be it'll come up with an O to say hide object right there O so it's actually quite a big chunk of fence that's being removed there and unfortunately it's not got a fence post on that end um, so that does look a little bit odd but we may be able to get around that Go to construction right here. All right. And then we go to uh, decoration and we go to fence. Let's have a look. Right. That's a bit of a scrawny fence post compared to the ones that we got there. Let's find something a bit better. We've got the actual fence post fence from the game. Valley Spring. Let's try a different one. The bigger one. This one here. That's more like it. Right. I'm going to bring you over here like this. That's about as close as we're going to get to it, I think. You can't raise them up and down. So we'll just have to put that one in there like that. That looks horrible. That's way too high. But you can't actually lower them down. It's better than nothing. I'm just going to go with it's better than... <laughs> well, I'm not so sure about that. You can't really see the fence from further away. Let's just gloss over that bit and just pretend it's not there. That looks terrible. How am I going to gloss over that? Look at it. That's a disgrace. Come on, Frith. You're a better fencer than that. That's awful. The single worst fence now in the entire game. And it's not because of the person who made the map. That is entirely because of Frithgar. Right. Well, let's go and get our tractor back to the yard. We've got to do something with the milk. I'm going to have a play around with a milk tanker, I think. What? Oh, yeah. I've got my tractor over here in the field. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to have a play around with the milk tanker. Also, I've altered the fence, yeah, the hedge here a little bit. So I just need to do a bit of this. Landscapering, and it's not painting, it's plants right there. And I take a little bit of grass like that and change to circle painting. That's got the hedge. So all I want to do is just remove this. Like that, so that I'm not looking at these shrubs everywhere. There. That's better. It's not because I don't want to be seeing the shrubs everywhere. It's because I want to be able to see where the gap in the hedge is. And it's very, very, very difficult to do that when the shrubs are taking it all up. And some of these places with the shrubs... They're like really close to the edges of the crops and I'm finding that that's quite irritating to me, especially when we were doing the harvest over here. Um, like coming down the side, well I think the barley wasn't as bad. That one had it. Yeah, there's a few spots over here, look. That, that 
irritating me. But you see how close it is. I'm painting right up against the field there to get those shrubs back out of the way. That does bug me a bit. Like, I actually spent time on farms cutting back shrubs like this from the edges of some of the arable fields because they they're a nuisance they, they catch up with the on the edge of the combine um and they cause problems when you're trying to harvest right they, they genuinely do cause problems so you would in real life go along and get rid of a lot of these so that you don't have them hanging into the field and it's either that or you plow less of the field and you don't really always want to do that like yes i i do understand you know letting nature have um some as well with your farm like you, you don't want to just have this massive barren landscape with no trees and no nothing because well you know, some people do but i i wouldn't that's, that's not my cup of tea that's, that's not what i'm after when it comes to farming um like i want to farm with nature and the countryside i don't want to be sort of pitting myself against it and that sort of like removing everything it, it feels more like you're, you're going up against rather than working with and that's not my style let's try and like, but this here where it's going right into the field see there just want to get rid of some of these all right, uh, let's, let's, we'll stop now. No more, no more. Um, he says this is one bit. You know, that's right up against the tree as well. Let's not worry about that. We'll go into our tractor over here and we will go on home. We need to do something with the milk next. We've got a load of milk that we need to deal with, so let's do something with that. Okay, I'm back doing some more recording. I have no idea what I was actually doing before I left. Um... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.